Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll get started on the rebrand. So uh, as of about a week ago, we rebranded from Rockport Networks to Serio. So in the past few years, we've been deployed in production environments globally in HPC contexts for internode communication, so high-performance Ethernet with MPI. We're leveraging the same technology now for um, large-scale composability. What's common between you know, all the architectures we deliver is that they leverage our distributed switching technology. Along with using commodity optics, we have what we call shuffles, which allow us to use standard components to develop very unique looking topologies that have tremendous advantages for any application that has latency requirements, such as high performance Ethernet, uh, PCI Express composability at row scale, uh, CXL memory pooling at multi-rack scale. So um, what I'm going to be focusing on in this talk is uh, the advantages of that distributed switching infrastructure and how we leverage those commodity components to deliver them uh, at large scale. So unfortunately, there's actually an error in the graph on the right. We have to add two to all those numbers. Just discovered it late. But uh, a couple of challenges with how typical switches deployed in the data center, and it could be Ethernet, InfiniBand, uh, really doesn't matter. Um, the idea is that as you increase the speed of those links, you go from 100 gig to 200 gig, for an 800 gig, and then 1.6 tera coming, uh, the price performance actually gets, gets worse for you. You're paying more for what you're transmitting. So the challenge is that as your bandwidth requirements go up, as you're using the latest generation of optics, there can be a lot of challenges in the affordability. And so the cost of the optics for the overall infrastructure becomes a larger and larger percentage of a system, which is, of course, something you're not wanting to make happen. And then on the right-hand graph, what we're seeing here is as the scale of the system goes up, you require more layers of switches. You, know, you may have a single switch at very small scale. You'll have two, rows, two layers of switches at sort of medium scale. And then being large than that, you're at three, even four layers of switches. And if you count the number of transceivers in the path from any endpoint to any other endpoint, you, know, you can see, again, add two to all those numbers, they can be up to 16 transceivers just to one communication between two endpoints. And so as you get to higher scale, you get this nonlinear effect where you have to pay for more transceivers for the same capability. So these nonlinearities in price performance and in the cost and power for scale can make it challenging as you go into high performance uh, applications at, at uh, any kind of scale. So what we do at Rockport, oh, sorry, <laughs> at Serio, sorry, that'll take me a while, uh, is we take any optics, so right now we're using QSF PDDs, we could use OSFPs, as I'll talk in a bit, you know, co-packaged optics to us, the source of the optics isn't as important as now what you, would, you do with them. So in a traditional centralized switching model, what you'll have is multiple lanes going between the same two endpoints, and they'll be aggregated at a very low level to present one high-speed logical link. What we do is we take those same lanes and we actually connect each lane to a different endpoint. So instead of having you know, the optics up in switches, creating uh, high, high bandwidth links, we actually put switches in each of the endpoints. And each of the endpoints has multiple lanes, now, now into links. And those links are directly connected to other neighbors. So it's node-to-node -node connectivity physically using these commodity optics. And our solutions, you know, we have 12, 16 links and designs to go to 24, even 32 links coming out of each endpoint. So a lot of connectivity, a lot of direct connections. And you know, we like to talk about the six degrees of Kevin Bacon where you know, my node has 12 or 16 neighbors and each of those nodes has 12 or 16 neighbors. You get to very large scale very quickly with very small diameters. So that's, that's the idea is using optics in a different way to create, achieve different kinds of topologies that have advantages in use cases where we apply that technology. So, Big challenge here, of course, is, okay, so I have 16 neighbors. How do I wire it? How do I actually get that connectivity in the pattern, the topology that I'm requiring for my use case? So that's where our shuffles come in. So these are passive devices. There's no power, there's no cooling, it's not optical switches. It's, it's, a, it's a rack mount, typically, uh, structure that contains fiber optic cables. And what happens is we use MPO24, MPO32 cables. Multiple links come from each endpoint into the shuffle. The shuffle would break out those links and physically route the links to the correct destination node 
for each of the links within that uh, cable. So what will happen is you know, I'll connect a node to one of the ports, and I'll be physically wired to 16 other ports to get those 16 direct connections. So by simply wiring a single cable from an endpoint to a shuffle, you create very rich, high path diversity topologies. You know, we've targeted different kinds of topologies. Taurus is what we've been using uh, in HPC. It has the right characteristics for HPC. As we talk about composability, lower diameter topologies like a flattened butterfly or a dragonfly become more, more attractive. And to the end user, it's still the same principle of a cable going from an endpoint to a shuffle to create a topology, we just make new kinds of shuffles. So as an example of a low diameter topology, you know, is one we call a two-dimensional flattened butterfly. So the idea is that each of these circles has a server behind it, that's the endpoint, and we form a full mesh across each row in a topology and across each column. So we create multiple paths to get from any endpoint to any other endpoint, for whether those are, you know, uh, Internode communication, whether some of those are PCI Express devices for composability, allows us to get that direct connectivity. And one of the things you might notice here is that because we have distributed switches, in the case of any kind of failure in one of those switches, the blast radius is very, very small, because it's only the endpoint that fails. So in a traditional switching model, a switch failure impacts a great number of nodes. And when we think about things like co-packaged optics, that small blast radius becomes a tremendous advantage because instead of having to replace a switch, which is very disruptive, you're just replacing the endpoint device. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's an example of a dragonfly topology that we're leveraging for composability at large scale. And so we have, on the right-hand side, some of our links are being used for small group topologies where we form very tight full meshes, allowing many servers to connect directly to CXL memory chassis, those memory cards in the bottom. And then at the large scale, we're using some of the links to create the global links towards device chassis. So the latency-sensitive connections are all directly connected back to back. Things that are less latency-sensitive, we can go very long distance, multi-row scale. As we look at a few examples of how you can use this distributed switching technology and this passive shuffles uh, you know, for combined composability infrastructure and CXL memory pools, we have designs that scale from about 104 to 205 nodes with very small diameter for those memory accesses. We talk about pure composable infrastructure, you know, GPUs, uh, TPUs, NVMe devices, things like that. We have designs to go from 49 to 8,000 nodes so this is full data center composability. Any device into any server across the data center. True, you know, very big composability. And then we're talking about high performance Ethernet with Dragonflies. We have designs up to 60,000 nodes. So this is a highly scalable technology, leverages commodity optics in a very unique way with advantages for you know, these high performance Ethernet composability and memory pooling applications. All right, I'm not going to go through the architectural parameters, as you can tell. This is more of an application of optics rather than a different approach to optics themselves. So, any questions? Could you go up to your optics cost slide? Yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I was just kind of stunned by that because if I, especially in your breakout type optics that you use, so if I look at the 400G, that would be a DR4 optic, and then a whole bunch of people are now doing DR8, which would be 800G, and actually the per bit cost from everything I've heard is supposed to be lower, not higher, so I'm kind of shocked. Where did you get this 3X number? This is information we got from our partners and the sorts of uh, price performance they're seeing for early adopters of these technologies. So really the point the slide's trying to make is you don't need to use the latest generation optics to go after these high performance use cases. Instead, use a large number of lower performance, like um, previous generation lanes you can think of it, like 50 gig PAM4, can be more cost effective than doing the 100 gig PAM4 as an example. So, so you expect DR8 to be like 6X DR4 almost in cost? Is that, I mean, this is what it tells me is it's just, extraordinary price multiplier, which, which I just find shocking. 
this, again, this is information from our partners on what they've been seeing in their optics. Thank you. But remember, so I'll take a step back here. So we're not, we typically are not targeting uh, very large hyperscaler markets. We're targeting mid-range enterprise, you know, hundreds, thousands of nodes rather than tens or hundreds of thousands of nodes. So it just might be the supply chains for those, uh, for those customers are different from what you might see at very large scale. Because the constraints in the market we've seen for optics, again, this is what we've seen or what our partners have seen. Uh, it will be variable as we move forward. The key is, though, you can use whatever optics make sense, co-packaged, uh, you know, whatever form factor works for you. The overall approach of distributed switching with passive infrastructure in the middle gives you the same common advantages.